Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. This is the fifth video on production analysis. Already four videos I have uploaded on this topic of production analysis. In the first video, I have explained you the meaning of the term production. What is the what are the factors of production? Production function. Then I have explained you about the law of variable proportion. What are the reasons for the different stages of the law of variable proportions? In the last video, I have explained you about the I mean scale, large scale production. Now, in this video, I am going to explain you about the economies and diseconomies of large scale production. So, the whole video will cover up the advantages and disadvantages of large scale production. So, watch the video till the end to get the complete command on the concept of production analysis. Very frequently, this question will be asked in examination regarding the economies and diseconomies of scale. Hope my regular viewers have already watched all the earlier videos on this subject of business economics, particularly on production analysis. If you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject business economics, select the topic of production analysis, watch the earlier videos, be perfect, be acquainted with the concept of production. Now, before starting the explanation of economies and diseconomies of uh, large scale production, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain in detail. Come on. <clears throat> the topic now is economies and diseconomies of large scale production. When the goods are produced on large scale bulk production, then definitely the, the business will get a number of advantages. Apart from that, few disadvantages are also there. So what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages of making the goods on large scale? That's what I'm going to explain. First of all, economies of scale. What do you mean by economies of scale? The advantages which a business will get by producing the goods on large scale. So economies of scale is referred to as advantages of large scale production. So Marshall has classified the economies into two types. That is internal economies and external economies. So first we'll discuss about internal economies of scales. Internal means within the firm within the organization a number of benefits a business will get to within the firm when the business produces the goods on large scale these are called internal economies so internal economies are those benefits or advantages enjoyed by an individual firm if it increases its size and output when a particular company increases its size or increases its production Definitely the company, the firm will get a number of advantages within the firm. That is called internal economy. The following are the main forms of internal economies. So in examination, very frequently this question will be asked, write the economies and diseconomies of scale. Now, first of all, what are the reasons why these internal economies will arise? What are the different forms of internal economies? One by one we'll discuss. First of all, labor economies. Actually, when the business expands, when the business, uh, I mean, do the business on large scale, then a number of labor economies will arise. The business can be able to procure, can be able to get qualified labor, skilled labor, efficient labor by paying more wages. Then what will happen? the productivity of labor will increase because highly qualified and experienced laborers will produce more goods. So here a large firm can attract specialist or efficient labor due to increasing specialization, the efficiency and productivity will increase because the quality of the labor, the labor caliber is high. So the productivity will increase then definitely it's an advantage within the business. Next is technical economies. When the business expands, then what will happen? The business can be able to get the latest technology, up-to-date technology. So due to use of latest technology, the cost of production may come down. 
when the cost of production decreases definitely the profitability will increase that is the advantage within the organization if the business produces the goods on large scale technical economies a large firm can adopt and implement the new and latest technology which help in reducing the cost of manufacture by using the new and latest technology the cost of production will come down whereas the small firm may not have the capability to implement the latest technology small firms unable to i mean implement or take the latest technology now next one is managerial economies the managerial cost will decrease due to large scale production like the salary of manager the managerial cost will decrease because even if the business expands the managerial remuneration will remain same the salary of manager will be same whether the goods are produced on large scale or small scale so when the business produces the goods on large scale the managerial cost will come down due to which the business will get the benefit the profitability will increase <coughs> next marketing economies <coughs> how the marketing economies uh, will the business get here a large firm can produce their required purchase the requirement on bulk scale when the business is large the business can purchase the material in bulk quantity when it purchases in bulk quantity they will get the discount then the material cost will decrease the cost of production will decrease the profitability will increase so these are the marketing economies which a business will get when it produces the goods on large scale similarly advertisement costs will also be reduced because of large firm produce a variety of different types of products so only in one advertisement they can advertise all the products in this way economies of advertisement they will get next is financial economies normally a large business can easily procure capital the business the banks will come forward to finance large businesses rather than small businesses so even the investors before investing they will see if the business is a large business they will come forward and invest the money so money is not a problem for the large scale business easily they can procure the funds the financial economies also they will get risk bearing economies a large business can be able to afford can be able to take the risk risk bearing ability is more because when they produce the goods on large scale and different types of product even if one product is incurring loss the other product may get the profit in this way the business can be able to survive the risk bearing ability will be more if the business is doing the business on large scale then external economies so far i have discussed about internal economies those advantages which the firm only will get by expanding the business now external economies are those benefits which accrue to all the firms if they are located at one place whether the business produces the goods on large scale or small scale the so external economies are those advantages from uh, arising from outside not within the organization but from outside so external economies are those benefits which are enjoyed by all the firms in an industry irrespective of their size whether the business is small size or large size if all the firms are located at one place then all the firms will get the benefit that is called external economies now example external economies are shared by all the firms in the industry so every firm will get the benefit of these external economies the following are the types of external economies the first is economies of localization localization means all the firms are located at one place when all the firms are located at one place definitely there is no problem for getting the labor then there is no problem for transportation communication finance everything will be will be located at that particular place so when all the firms are situated at one place they enjoy the benefit of skilled labor skilled labor freely available infrastructure facilities and cheap transport reducing the manufacturing cost when all the infrastructure facilities communication banking insurance warehousing labor everything is freely available because all the firms producing the goods in the industry are located at one place that is localization 
Then economies of information. When all the firms are located at one place, there is free flow of information. All the firms jointly can conduct the research and development. So all the firms in industry can have a common research and development center through which research work can be undertaken jointly. They can be able to share the information. So next one is growth of subsidiary industry. When a particular industry grows, naturally there is a demand for subsidiary goods. So automatically the subsidiary industry will also grow if all the firms are located at one place. The production process can be divided into different components. Each component can be manufactured by specialized subsidiary form. Next, economies of byproducts. Whatever the waste released by the industry can be used by any other firm to produce a byproduct. In this way, all these are the economies, external economies which a business will get. <clears throat> now, diseconomies of scale. So far, I have explained you about the internal economies and external economies. But apart from economies, there are some diseconomies, means disadvantages to firms. Disadvantages to firms when it grows on large scale, when it produces on large scale. So diseconomies of scale are disadvantages that arise due to expansion of production scale and leads to rise in the cost of production. When the business expands, when it produces more and more goods up to a certain point, it will be beneficial to the business. But if the business grows over that saturation point, then diseconomies will creep in. The business will get more disadvantages if it grows indefinitely. So, uh, like economies, diseconomies may be internal and external. Internal diseconomies are those which are exclusively internal to a firm. They arise within the firm. So, just like economies, we have internal economies and external economies. Similarly, the diseconomies may be internal or external diseconomies. Internal diseconomies means those disadvantages which arise within the firm. Within the organization, some diseconomies will arise. These are called internal diseconomies. So external diseconomies arise outside the firm, mainly the input market. So external diseconomies will arise outside the firm. That means when all the firms are located at one place, then certain diseconomies will arise from the input market. There's a problem for getting the input because every firm is competing to procure that goods. Similarly, some transportation communication problem will also arise. External diseconomies. Now, first we discuss about internal diseconomies. Internal means within the same organization. So diseconomies begin to appear first at the management level. <clears throat> first of all, when the business grows, when the business produces the goods on large scale, first problem arises management level problem. That means it will be difficult for the management to control the business, to manage the business because it is it has increased so, to such a vast level. This limit is reached when the advantage of division of labor and management skill have been fully exploited. When the advantages of labor, managerial skill or any other facilities are fully exploited. Beyond that point if we go, then definitely diseconomies will arise to the firm. Excess capacity of plant, warehousing, transport, communication are fully utilized. When it is fully utilized, all the resources over that point will get the disadvantages. Now, managerial inefficiencies arise due to expansion of scale of production. Managerial diseconomies. That means the managerial cost will increase because management, it will be difficult for them to organize and to manage. Now, with fast, with fast expansion of production skill, personal contact and communication will be affected. When more number of workers, more number of employees are there, it is beyond the control, then communication problem will arise between the management and the labor or between within the labor side or within the management side. So communication problem will arise when the business expands. Now implementation of decision is delayed due to coordination problem. 
another disadvantage this economy within the organization is coordination there is no coordination between different departments then internal diseconomies lead to labor inefficiency other another source of internal diseconomy is the overcrowding of labor so labor inefficiency when more and more laborers are employed it will be difficult to control the labor when labor is not controlled inefficiency will arise and apart from that labor overcrowding because we have limited fixed factors on those limited fixed factors we have increased the labor so pressure of labor crowding of labor is another problem of this is also this economies internal this economy now external this economy the this economies which arise to all the firms if the firms are located at one place so external this economies are the disadvantages that originate outside the firm due to natural constraints especially in agriculture and extractive industry example has been given regarding agriculture and extractive industry we cannot be able to increase the agricultural production overnight because agriculture mainly depends on a number of factors some natural factors extractive industries there is limit on extracting the resources from the nature so if the industry are dependent on agriculture or on the extractive industry it will affect all the firms all the firms will be affected more than that increasing demand for inputs puts pressure on the input market and input prices begin to rise causing a rise in the cost of production when all the firms are located at one place then input prices will increase the raw material prices the labor charges prices will increase due to which the cost of production will increase on the production side the law of diminishing returns to scale come into force due to excessive use of fixed factors in the earlier videos i have explained you about law of variable proportion in that law of variable proportion we have seen that if we excessively use the variable factor beyond the fixed factors then definitely diminishing returns will arise that means the output will diminish then for example excessive use of cultivable land turns it into barren land if we continuously use the land then what will happen the cultivable land will become barren land uncultivable land similarly pumping out water on a large scale of irrigation causes the water table to go down if we excessively draw the water from the earth then what will happen the water table will come down the water table will go down due to which the irrigation cost will increase so these are the problems external this economies so in this video i have explained you about the economies and diseconomies of large scale production the so first of all economies are internal external similarly diseconomies are also internal and external but overall point of view the economies are more than diseconomies of large scale production that is the reason why most of the firm will go ahead on large scale production these are the points you have to remember while writing the examination on this uh, question of economies and diseconomies of scale inshallah we'll continue the next video on this production process in the next session